On a quiet stretch of the Solway reaching from Dornoch and Dumfriesshire over the border to Longtown, an amazing secret is kept by the waves and the grasses. Who could guess just by looking at this quiet rural area how vital a role it played in the First World War? Walking through the quiet streets of East Riggs and Gretna today, it is hard to imagine that 30,000 people came from all over to work in what was called the greatest factory on earth. Munitions women and munitions men lived in a settlement of wooden huts, brick hostels and substantial houses which form the basis of housing in East Riggs and Gretna townships today. What a busy time it must have been. It was here that thousands of women workers, like millions more throughout Britain, toiled willingly for their country and gained votes for women for the first time. The issue with which suffragettes had made controversial with extreme actions was now eminently respectable. The case for women's rights could not now be dismissed because of their outrageous behaviour. When Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator of Sherlock Holmes, visited the Gretna factory, he was so impressed by the women's efforts that he became convinced that women should have the vote. He wrote, hats off to the women of Britain. Even all the actions of the militants shall not prevent me in future from being an advocate for their vote. For those who have helped to save the state should be allowed to guide it. It was Conan Doyle who also coined the phrase, the devil's porridge. This described exactly the highly volatile nature of the gun cotton and nitroglycerin mixture which the women workers needed by hand. The munitions girls wore rubber wellingtons to avoid sparks. They were not allowed to wear buttons on their tunics because if any foreign body fell into the mixture, then there would almost certainly be an explosion. Mary Ellen Halliday, a worker at the factory and an East Riggs resident until she died recently, recalled how she got into trouble from the women police for breaking the safety rules. We wore a certain uniform, khaki trimmed with red. We used to change into this when we came on shift. We also wore a hat covering our hair. We used to come down the line at half past two in the morning for our break, and if you met the lady police, you were searched. I was searched one night, and I had an awful cold, and my mother had bought me a bodice with buttons on. And when I went through the changing room this night, I met the lady police, and she would examine me, and she cut off all the buttons on my bodice, and I was fined six pence. You weren't allowed buttons or needles or anything in case they got into the explosive. There were some girls who took knitting in and they were fined for having needles. You weren't allowed anything like that. <laughs> 